The Oktoberfest is the largest and most famous folk festival in the world. But how did it come to be? What's the story behind Oktoberfest beer? And why does the Oktoberfest start in September? Here's the history of Oktoberfest. It all starts with a wedding between Crown Prince Ludwig, the later King Ludwig I, and Princess Therese Charlotte Louise of Saxony Hildburghausen, or just short Therese. The wedding took place on October 12, 1810, in the court chapel of the Munich residence. After several days of rather private celebrations, on October 17, the citizens of Munich were invited to a meadow south of the Munich city wall to take part in horse races. The cavalry major Andreas Michael Dallarmi had the idea of holding horse races to strengthen the national spirit. He also had the idea of repeating the race every year and therefore is the father of the Oktoberfest. Contrary to popular belief, beer was sold in three beer stalls at the very first Oktoberfest. This was another reason why the festival quickly gained popularity. The meadow was renamed Theresienwiese in honor of the bride. The meadow became synonymous for the Oktoberfest. Real Munich locals hardly ever say Oktoberfest. They say, geh mal auf die Wiesen, let's go to the meadow, or simply, Wiesen for short. As early as 1813, the Oktoberfest was cancelled for the first time due to the Napoleonic Wars. To date, the Oktoberfest has been cancelled a total of 26 times due to wars, pandemics and hyperinflation. The Oktoberfest has also been linked to the agricultural exhibition since the beginning. Initially, the Farmers Association also organized the festival. Since 1996, an agricultural exhibition has only been held every four years. Originally, the official name of the Oktoberfest was Maximilianswoche, Maximilians Week. But it was not until 1824 that the name Oktoberfest became established. In 1829, a request was made to move the festival to the more beautiful month of September. However, as the festival meadow was still being used for agricultural purposes at this time, it was not until 1872 that the festival was actually brought forward. By then, it was too late to rename it Septemberfest. In the later 19th century, the Oktoberfest slowly took on its present form. The first chicken roastery opened in 1881, 1886 electricity was introduced to the Oktoberfest, making rides possible, and in 1889 the first large beer tent was erected. There was also a band that kept the atmosphere going. The innkeeper at the time, Georg Lang, was a clever businessman. He established the melody Ein Prosit der Gemütlichkeit. which was followed by the typical Ornstzwerg Sufa Today as then, it stimulated higher beer consumption. The Trachtenparade has always taken place on the first Sunday of Oktoberfest since 1895. Back then, traditional costumes were still part of the show and were worn less privately. But with the emergence of new traditions, the old ones are also disappearing. The last regular horse race took place in 1913. Only on the anniversaries of 1960 and 2010 were races held again. The years after the First World War were a difficult time for the Oktoberfest. It was not clear whether it would survive the times of famine and inflation. It was clearly kept alive by clubs in a smaller form, by 1925, however, the economic situation had improved to such an extent that the city of Munich was able to take over and the Oktoberfest returned to its former glory. From 1933, the Nazis politicized the Oktoberfest like every aspect of life in Germany. However, they abolished the freak shows and human zoos, which were very popular in the ages of colonialism. They did the right thing, probably for the wrong reasons. 
The first Oktoberfest after the Second World War was already held in 1946. It was a little smaller at first, but returned to its full splendor in 1949. In 1950, the mayor of the time, Thomas Wimmer, introduced the tradition of the mayor tapping the first barrel. Since 1980, the mayor presents the first mass of beer to the Prime Minister of Bavaria. As the mayor is usually center-left and the Prime Minister center-right, this is also a sign that political disputes should be put to rest during Oktoberfest. 1980 was also a dark year for the Oktoberfest. A far-right terrorist planted a bomb at the entrance of the Oktoberfest. Both he and 12 other people were killed in the explosion. The theory of a lone perpetrator was quickly spread by public authorities. However, there are still doubts about this today. A story worthy of the video. At the end of the 1990s, the image of the Oktoberfest changed because of the visitors. Whereas in previous decades only the Trachtenvereine and employees wore Lederhosen and Dirndls, visitors suddenly dressed accordingly. It is probably a counter-movement to globalization to show that one is connected to a certain place. However, this led to certain bloopers. For example, Munich residents, who don't actually have a traditional costume, started to wear the clothes of the rural population. Tourists from all over the world are also joining in and donning Lederhosen and Dirndls, or at least what they think they are. Today it is viewed more and more critically. Many people grumble about the costume party that has established itself at the Oktoberfest and which has little to do with the traditional Tracht. So my tip for you would be, either you invest properly in a traditional costume for the Oktoberfest or you visit it in normal clothes. But if you wear cheap clothes from Far East bought online, you won't be taken seriously and sometimes even get hostility from the locals. It is simply seen as disrespectful to a long-standing tradition. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the history of the Oktoberfest. Like and subscribe if you are interested in my guided tour through Munich. Don't hesitate and contact me. See you in the next video.